what's going on guys in today's video we're gonna do a python control server which is very useful to execute commands and control your computers when you're away from home so let's go ahead and take a look at how the script's gonna run by the end of today so i executed the server here now let me run the client on another computer all right howdy we got our message so let's run some commands we get a response so we're executing these commands in our client right now you can see if i do a dir here uh, we can actually go ahead and do a netstat to show the connections and by the way if my voice sounds a little weird it's because i'm sick holidays are here whole families around very easy to get the flu going all over the place but let's wait for this netstat command so we can show you guys the established connection all right there we go now let's find the client and here we go this is the established connection and now let's get into the code and see how it's done So this time around, we're going to program our server and client in Python 3. And that's because Python 2 is nearing end of life. So I also love to learn new stuff. So it just makes sense to do the project in Python 3. This is part one of maybe seven or eight. And yeah, let's dive into the code. So let's start off by importing the socket and OS libraries and then let's leave a comment here for socket configuration and we can go ahead and save this uh, in our desktop we'll call it server.py alright so let's go ahead and initialize the socket right now so socket.socket .socket and socket.af inet socket sock stream cool now on the server we're gonna bind to 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 which is all the available IP addresses and let's choose a completely random port number like always and we're gonna go ahead and listen for a single client all right cool so any connection that is incoming we're gonna go ahead and accept it like so and now we're gonna need a true loop and this is where we'll go ahead and receive the messages so receive data we'll do data s dot receive we'll do a buy here check for end of command all right so after receiving the data we need to check for the end of a command or the output right so we're gonna do if data dot decode and this is one of the things that we have to do with python 3 that we did not have to do previously and that is to decode a bytes like object into a string all right and you don't have to fully understand this but you just need to know that whenever we receive this eofx that means we reached the end of the output from the client and we're gonna go ahead and do the following set of instructions right so the first thing we're gonna do is print the data without the end of effects here so we'll do that like this print another thing with python 3 instead of doing print and with the quotes you have to do parentheses it's just minor things that are different we'll do data and then minus four so we can extract this string over here and we do have to decode as ascii all right otherwise we'll get some errors then we'll go ahead and get next command so we'll do next command equals input 
So in Python 2, this would have been raw inputs, but again, minor change. Shell, like that. Then we go ahead and send that ish. Whoops. Ish. Like that. And let's do a check if the next command is quit then we can break out the server and also send a message to the client so that the client can shut down the client script so next command dot decode oops we need to encode not decode this time like that and we'll break else we're gonna go ahead and send without breaking we also need to encode again cool and we'll put an else over here I guess we can put a comment here as well so to just go ahead and print if we have not reached the end of the output yet and we also have to print uh, so notice that this is only whenever we reach this set of characters so if we don't we're just gonna go ahead and keep printing the output oops print not the code print data dot the code ascii there we go so that's gonna be it for the server code and now let's jump into the client code so before we get into the client code i noticed here I did c.bin and it should be c.bind and also on the shebang here we should do python3 not just python so let's go ahead and save that and let's start a new file let's paste this over here and let's get started with the client code so let's go ahead and import subprocess socket and OS all right now let's do a comment here let's write IP address and port and we'll set the host this is where you should input the IP address of your server like so and the port they should both match so this port should be the same as the one defined over here all right cool so let's get started configure socket connection I'm gonna go ahead and create our regular socket object here and we'll do socket af inet socket dot sock stream and we're gonna go ahead and connect to the server like that and let's send a message we'll just send a message saying howdy which is our usual message and remember guys we have to pass these four characters over here and somebody calls me right now amazing so let's go ahead and encode all right now let's begin with the main loop at this point while true we're gonna go ahead and receive data and if the data and we need to decode it into a string is equal to quit so this is the first case here we're just gonna go ahead and break from the client Okay, so we'll go ahead and break out of the loop once we receive the quit message. Otherwise, let's do if we receive the change directory command. So we need to get only the first two characters. So we'll do two uh, equals to CD. So basically we're gonna do this because otherwise 
it's just not possible to change directory from the server so this is gonna allow us to go into different directories and we'll try OS change there and we'll have to get rid of the first three characters because it's CD space so we'll do data dot decode and then we need to do three like that all right and if the user passes a non-existing directory for any reason will just pass otherwise it would crash uh, and that would not be good okay so we handle those two conditions now if that's not the case then we're just gonna assume the server is trying to send any other type of command and we're gonna do a process sub process and this is where we actually invoke any of the other commands like there or netstat or who am I whatever so we'll do data dot the code and then we have to do shell equals to true okay we'll do std out equals to sub process dot pipe std error equals to sub process dot pipe and std in equals to sub process dot pipe Okay, so basically we're getting all of these possible outputs from the command and we're gonna add that to a variable over here. So we'll do std output equals process dot std out dot read plus process dot std error dot read so we'll just display both of them if it's an error we'll display the error if it's the output of the command we'll just read it and display it as well again we have to go ahead and decode this bad boy like that and now we can send it back to the server like so all right cool so we're almost done one last thing we need to do a lot of you forgot i know we have to go ahead and send the eo oops eofx and we have to encode this and that's how the server is gonna know like hey we reached the end of this command now we can go ahead and work on the next command and once we're done with that that's the end of the loop we can just send like a message saying bye or whatever code it and yeah that's it let's just close the socket and let's save the client there we go now let's test it out all right let me run the server on this computer Python 3 server it's listening now let me run the client on my other computer here howdy we got our message who am I there we go let's do a there here we got the desktop directory now let's try to go into a different directory nice you can see it changes directory accordingly and yeah if we were to go like cd a random name here you can see it doesn't crash the script which is amazing now yeah that's basically what we wanted to do for part one we're going to be adding encryption to this we're going to be implementing multiple clients and a lot more good stuff so this is part one of maybe eight parts i don't know hope you guys enjoyed this one and i'll see you next time